Towards the end of Armistice Runner, um, the hero, Ernest, who knows that the First World War is over, goes to a small French town, a little like this. And this, this is in the area, um, this is very close to where a lot of the fighting took place in the First World War. And Ernest tells the people, the local people in, in the French town, that the First World War is over. Um, and I just wanted to read you a scene because um, it wouldn't have looked like this. It would have been um, smashed up by war, by shelling, by, by a terrible event. Um, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful town and it's lovely to see it looking like this today. But I thought I'd read you um, a short scene about Ernest um, going into the, the French town. I thought back to the maps I'd studied and I remembered there was a village a mile to the north. I decided to run to the village. There, I would be safe. When I got there, my first thought was that the village was empty. The streets weren't really streets. They were more like canyons of rock with barricades at the far end. What used to be a town, hall, houses and cafes were smashed, pouring rubble into the streets. It was like one of those crevices we used to run up Fred, rock on either side and more rock strewn across the ground. Charred wood stuck out where floors used to be. There were clothes strewn around and smashed plates and a bed. On the left, a building that was completely intact. It stood out as if it had been built after the bombing. It seemed impossible it would be standing at all. Thick grey dust covered everything. I tried to imagine our village like this. The butchers, the pub, the boathouse, our house, all smashed to pieces. That was the only way I could imagine what this town used to be. In the distance, I thought I could hear bells ringing, like the church bell calling people to worship. Then I saw a huddle of people cowering out in the open. This was their town. They were the people of the town but they looked more like vagrants in a strange city. Their eyes were wild, just like the six soldiers I'd just left. They were eyes that had seen too much. A man stood up and walked two paces towards me, blocking the view of the others. But I'd seen some children, women, and then a bedraggled figure on his knees beyond them, head down next to a brazier, flames leaping across it into the sky. English, the man called to me. I held my arms out, clear of my rifle. English, I told him. He looked nervy, nervy like he would do something, anything to protect his people. He was wearing old filthy clothes, but he still had a silk star scarf tied in a perfect knot at his neck. Then he fired a volley of questions at me. What is happening? Why are you here? Where are the French army? Why has the noise stopped? Are they all dead? Le guerre est fini, I interrupted. I said again. Fini. For a few seconds there was silence. Then the man burst out laughing, flung his arms around me and lunged at me. As he held on to me in a tight grip that squeezed the air from my lungs, he was joined by others. People emerged from the cellars around us, four children and two young women, and one older woman, about my mother's age, stood further back, eyes dark and serious, staring deep into me. And I could not look away until she did. Then a very old man approached, walking slowly, raising his stick to me in greeting as I stared back at one figure who did not come to greet me. I saw that he was a young man, even younger than me. He was kneeling, dirty and tired, but clearly no older than seventeen. His grey uniform was torn, worn to threads, he had no boots on. He was covered not in wounds but red blotches that I knew meant he was infested with lice. And then I noticed his hands bound behind his back. I stepped back from my host. Le garçon, I asked. Then I corrected myself. Soldat, soldat. The man nodded as if to reinforce my correction. Then he said, execution. He waved his arms to take in the ruin of his village, the row of three graves with crosses in what looked like an old garden. I understood. I shook my head. I couldn't let it happen. I could not allow these French villagers to kill this German soldier, this boy. And that's what happens um, at the very end of Armistice Runner. Um, Ernest, who is a soldier whose brother has been killed by the Germans, has to decide what to do with a German soldier that he becomes in charge of when he takes him from the French village. Um, and that's kind of the, the final bit of the book and the final choice that Ernest has to make, what he does with this, this German soldier right at the end of the First World War.